multiple point charges. By now, we're pretty used to seeing the field around a single point charge. Remember, it's more like a cloud or a, a fog, but we draw these field lines and they diverge from positive charges. We also drew what happens when there's a second charge and the field lines begin on positive charges and end on negative charges and they form sort of these lines and the curling of the lines is the fringing. Well, what if there's more than two? Let's go ahead and add another positive charge. And notice the little bit of warping of the fields around the negative charge doesn't look like it did before. And we can add a random distribution of a whole bunch of charges and it just gets absolutely crazy. But how do we handle this mathematically? Here's a nice picture of two charges in full three dimensions. So these lines were actually rigorously calculated given those charge distributions. Pretty neat. I think field lines and electromagnetic fields are actually a very beautiful thing. It's easy to miss that if all we're looking at is the equations. So in one slide, here's how you do this. We're applying a something called superposition, and this has to do with Maxwell's equations being linear. So if we have multiple charges and we would like to know the field, the overall field at an observation point, we simply look one charge at a time, calculate the electric flux due to each of those charges independently, one at a time. And if there's 10 charges, we'll have 10 different answers. We add all of those together and that overall sum is going to be the overall electric flux density. Once we have that, then it would just be one simple step to calculate the electric field intensity by dividing the flux by the permittivity. Let's tie this together with an example. So first we have a problem statement. We have three charges, a Q1, Q2, and Q3, and each is at a different position. I would like to calculate the electric flux density at the origin. Notice now, I wasn't cruel. I didn't ask for the electric field intensity, so we don't actually have that second step, but the second step would be easy. We would just divide by the permittivity if we wanted that. But I'm asking for the electric flux density, so we won't have to do that. The first thing I like to do is sketch the problem. If you're working on paper, that's difficult to do in three dimensions but we can do that on a computer. And I've plotted the three charges, the two positive I have in red, and the one negative charge, the second charge I have is blue. And the observation point is that little gray dot there, that's at the origin. So we would like to calculate the overall electric flux density at the origin. So I like to first organize the problem. How am I going to solve it? You know, if I know ahead of time, I'm going to have to solve D1, D2, D3, and I jump straight into that, I feel like I can lose myself. So let's start at a high level and think, okay, the overall electric flux density is going to be the sum of the electric flux density if there was only the first charge in this problem. D2 is the electric flux if only the second charge were in the problem. And of course, D3 is the electric flux if only the third charge were in the problem. So we will calculate these one at a time, add them together, and then we'll have the overall electric flux density. The first thing we'll do is calculate D1. This is the electric flux density at our observation point due to the first charge. So the first charge is over here, it's labeled Q1. And just for fun, I've drawn all the electric field lines emerging from that. And so the electric flux density at our observation point would be parallel to the line crossing through that point. Let's go ahead and calculate what that is. So we'll use this e form of our equation to calculate electric flux density from a single point charge. And this is the form that I like to do calculations with. So to do that, We'll calculate this R minus RQ term. And since we're focusing on the first charge, our Q is Q1. So this is actually the position of the first charge. So we calculate R minus RQ. 
And then we calculate this ratio of R minus RQ divided by the magnitude of that cubed. And we work through the numbers, and this is the vector that we get. Then the last step is to plug all of that into the original equation for D1. We throw this into our calculator or something, and we end up with the electric flux density at the observation point due to just the first charge as if the second and third charges were not there. Now we're going to repeat this for the second charge. In this case, the second charge is negative, and even though I have the arrows pointing away, they're actually pointing toward the charge. To convey that, I have blue lines instead of red. But we have the second charge, and so since the lines are converging onto that charge because it's negative, we know the electric flux, D2, will be pointing in this direction, actually toward the charge because the charge is negative. We're going to repeat the same math we just did. Here's the general equation that we use, and we're still using the form, the R minus RQ. So we'll calculate R minus RQ. In this case, it's the RQ is the position of the second charge, which we put in here. Now we have an expression for R minus RQ. Then we need the ratio of R minus RQ over the magnitude of that cubed. But we could throw in those numbers and we end up with the ratio. We have that vector now. We throw all of that back into the original expression for D2, work through the math, and we have our final expression for D2. This is the electric flux density at the observation point as if it was only the second charge in the problem. The first and third charges aren't there and can't contribute. And almost done here, we repeat the same procedure for the third charge. So the third charge is now in the lower left of this figure. It's a positive charge, so the electric field lines diverge from it, and so we can already sort of sketch the electric flux density at our observation point due to that charge. So there's the expression that we will use to calculate D3. We'll calculate R minus RQ. In this case, RQ is the position of the third charge. So here's the numbers for that. And finally, the vector that we get for R minus RQ. Given that, it's easy to calculate the ratio of R minus RQ over the magnitude of that cubed. And here's the final vector we get for that ratio. We plug all that back into the expression for D3. And here's our expression for the electric flux density due to just the third charge as if the first and second charges were not present. And you can already get the pattern here. If there was a fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh charge, we would just keep repeating this. It's very tedious, but we can work through it. It's not difficult math, just tedious math. But we're back to the original equation that we wrote, which was the overall electric flux density is the sum of the three that we've just calculated. And I'm visualizing this over to the right. It makes kind of a crazy figure, but it's neat to see all of it at the same time. And you can imagine how complicated it gets when there's multiple, more than three charges. It gets to the point where we really can't even visualize it. But we calculated a D1, a D2, and a D3. And we could throw in the numbers and add them up. And we get an answer. And of course, we want to write this in a nice clean form and put a box around it. And that is our final answer for the electric flux density at the observation point, which is at the origin, and the units is coulombs per meter squared.